Well, we've been told that the key to success is looking out for number one, but new research in biology and neuroscience has discovered that compassion not only improves others' lives, it can enhance and transform our own life. Here to tell us why compassion can lead to success is our fun speaker, Amy D. Welcome Hi. back to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Always nice to see you guys. So, yeah. so I'm curious, uh, start with this. How would you define compassion? Well, compassion, I, I'll define it by um, talking first about um, when you have empathy. So empathy comes from a different part of the brain. Empathy is when you can really understand how someone feels. That comes from the part of our brain that experiences pain. So it's unsustainable. Compassion comes from a place in our brain that um, where love and connection comes from. So it's very sustainable. The difference between empathy is that you feel it, but you're not going to do anything about it. Compassion needs action. That you feel someone's pain, but you also are, um, you feel as though you want to do something to help eliminate their suffering. So that's the difference. It, it requires action. Mm. That was good. I think she nailed it right there. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we get more compassion in our life? Does it start with, you know, learning how to have more empathy for people and then it kind of develops? So compassion is something, I mean, first of all, I think it's really important to recognize the benefits. I think, you know, as you said in the beginning, we think number one is most important. We think if we have compassion, we have to choose maybe between kindness and success. And we don't. The truth is because compassion is sustainable, it, it actually multiplies and it, it enhances your life so that when you give and are kind and compassionate to someone, your life becomes better as well. And compassion can be taught. Um, we start with compassion by having, listening to understand each other. Really listening to, understanding that we may come from different areas, but we listen to understand. And that we also, um, enact resources in order to figure out how to help each other. So why do you think that becomes, I think you have a great point, because we often think, hey, it's all about A number one, but yet there's not a lot of great models out there, people that show, hey, you can be compassionate and have quote unquote success, because we always glorify guys like you're seeing now with Harvey Weinstein and stuff, I mean, that's the antithesis of compassion. So how do we get more of that and how do we model it better? Um, I think we model it better to our children. I think we need to get out in our communities and act. I think we need to listen to each other even when we don't agree. I think that's really important. And I do think we have a, we have a misperception of what the alpha male is. Um, the alpha male was alpha, the the term was created through studies of wolves, and the alpha male is actually someone who's very confident. That wolf is very confident understands its power, doesn't have to show off, exudes confidence in, um, from the, the, the pack that follows it. Um, that doesn't sound like, you know, what we think of as the alpha male. And I think we have to recognize that we can't survive without each other. We do not act alone in this world. There is nothing that we do that, that is independent of each other. And so we have to come together. But I think it's always presented as, not always, but often presented as a zero-sum game. I win, yes. you lose. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that compassion builds self-esteem. Compassion helps you health-wise. It lowers blood pressure. It decreases depression. Compassion even helps in, in companies and businesses because compassion is attached to um, knowing that you make a difference. And in this world, we all want to know we make a difference. So it increases morale, it increases retention, it boosts productivity. So there are so many aspects to compassion. And it's interesting, you know, you always have, when you believe in something, you have experiences that give that back. I recently spoke to an insurance group, a very big insurance group, and I had the opportunity to sit with the CEO and chairman of this insurance company so he's very successful and as he sat around with his employees and the people who were attending this event his compassion it, it just exuded from <clears throat> him the people who talked about him talked about the kindness that he had offered to each other he was such an example of people they wanted to follow him because he was such a great person so once again you know I mean it just shows that the power comes from this it comes from understanding that we can't make it without each other. 
and that we all have to step up our game a little bit, especially in today's world where there's a lot of bullying. Mm -hmm. So my question for you, and we've got to wrap things up, we can come back to this yeah. maybe, but did he have a particular practice in place to he believes in kindness or? and it's interesting because we've exchanged um, emails since this and he really believes that his practice and his his belief in this world is that he's here to be kind and to make a difference he mm -hmm. believes that to the core of who he is it was pretty impressive wow that's cool all right more on compassion and how it can impact you right after this